Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India second lecture of NPTEL on calculus of variations. Let us recall what we did in the first lecture. In the first lecture, we got introduced to certain concepts on the calculus of variations. Here uh, I mentioned this, uh, these two books which will be followed as reference books that the calculus of variations with application uh, by Robert Weinstock. This is a Dover publication appeared in 1974. The second book is a famous book by L. Els Goss, Mir Publications, 1970. The title of the book is Differential Equations and the Calculus of Variations. So, these two books will be covering uh, the matter, material for 20 lectures, which are going to be delivered by me uh, on the Calculus of Variations. So, let us recall what we did in this, in the first lecture. As mentioned, uh, the study of the calculus of variations is started by the problem posed by John Bernoulli. This is double N. John Bernoulli in 1696, which he proposed a problem known as Bratschestokon problem, where he asked to find a smooth curve uh, in a vertical plane joining two points A and B not on the same vertical level such that the time taken by a particle sliding under the influence of gravity takes the least time. In that year 1696, famous mathematicians like Newton, Leibniz, John Bernoulli and his brother Jacob Bernoulli and many other like La Hospital, all these people solved the problem in that very year. So, the interest got created on the study of calculus of variations and many more problems were posed and solved using the techniques of the calculus of variations. We saw the second problem where in a plane there are two points A and B, then we asked to find a curve such that the length of the curve joining these two points is the minimum and we know the answer is uh, the straight line joining these two points uh, A and B in a given plane and we can see that it can be posed as a problem of calculus of variation like the minimization of the functional L which is a function of y given by integral x 1 to x 2 square root of 1 plus y prime square t x which is nothing but the integral of the element length d s integrated over uh, the interval x 1 to x 2. We will see that when the sufficient tools developed for this calculus of variations, we will see that the answer will be actually the straight line joining these two points. Then other problems like isoparametric problems where a curve is given in a plane where its length is fixed given by L and it is asked to find a surface which is enclosed by this curve. So, this problem is also can be posed as a problem of calculus of variations. We will see that uh, here in that case the answer will come out to be the flat air, uh, surface enclosed by the uh, curve whose length is fixed given by the length L. Now, this is the concept of uh, the calculus of variations is uh, similar, it is a generalization of the concept of finding the another problem of uh, calculus of variations can be uh, seen that given a curve C here whose length is uh, L, which is a fixed number and we are asked to find a surface 
uh, enclosed by this uh, curve C. Here, uh, it is an isomerometric problem where the parameter is fixed and uh, you are asked to find a surface which is enclosed by this curve C whose length is fixed. So, in that case, here it can also be seen that S surface area given by uh, Z of x y, where this surface will be given by Z of x y is given by the double integral square root of 1 plus Z x square plus Z y square d x d y. And here length of this curve will be fixed that is given by the earlier integral, uh, which is parametrically we can see that the length of this will be given by x 1 to x 2 square root of 1 plus y prime square d x. So, such a thing is can be posed as a, the problem of calculus of variation, where uh, you have one quantity which is to be optimized uh, under the given condition, uh, which is known as a side condition, like the length of the curve is fixed and we are asked to find the surface, uh, such that the area of the surface is the minimum or maximum. Here, let us recall that certain concepts related to finding the points where a given function uh, takes the minimum or maximum value. Here, there are certain points where function takes the uh, maximum value over the whole interval, such a point is called global maximum or at a certain point, the function takes the minimum value over the whole interval, such a point is called the global minimum and there are certain other points in the interior of the interval or it may be at the end points also, where the function can have local minimum or local maximum. So, for example, at this point x 1, uh, in the neighborhood of this, there are points where the function is having larger value than the uh, value at the point x 1. Similarly, at the point x 2, uh, in the neighborhood of this, there are points such that function f takes uh, lower value than the uh, value at the point x 2. So, these are the points where uh, f takes uh, local minimum and local maximum respectively. So, here when function has smooth properties like its derivative is continuous, then you can see that the, at the interior points, if the function takes uh, local minimum or local maximum, then and the derivative becomes 0, the tangent becomes horizontal at those points. Uh, whereas, at the end points, we may have to check the values of the function uh, separately and compare it with other values, so that we can check whether at the end points, uh, global uh, minimum or global maximum is occurring or not. And at other interior points, uh, if function is smooth, then we just check for the equation f prime x equal to 0 and solve for those x such that the f takes f prime takes value 0. So, at those points we will check then the uh, whether these are the points candidates for minimal or local minimum or local maximum and then we go for higher uh, order derivatives other tests to check whether we have minimum or maximum at those points. Then, here we define the concept of uh, functional. So, uh, it is you know that in the case of a function, it a function assigns a number in this interval a b to a number in the real line r, whereas in uh, the functional case, uh, this functional l defines it assigns a number to a given function in the class of admissible functions, like y uh, belonging to a uh, the admissible class over the interval a comma b, it assigns a number l y, uh, which is a real number and it is uh, given like in this example given by the integral x 1 to x 2 square root of 1 plus y prime square d x. So, given y, we have the length l as a real number, positive real number non negative real number here, such that it assigns to each curve smooth curve. So, that y prime is piecewise continuous. 
so that this integral is uh, well defined. So, this L will assign a number to uh, such uh, admissible curve, here admissibility is that y prime should be piecewise continuous, so that this integral is defined in the sense of Riemann. And so, this L, this functional L assigns a number uh, L y to this fu uh, function, such a thing is called functional. And here, we will have when this uh, integral uh, or we have more general forms of integrals, where y prime, y double prime appearing in the integrand, then we will take the higher order uh, continuous spaces, which are spaces defined as C k, where k is non-negative integer over the interval a b, uh, endowed with the supremum norm over the interval a b. So, for example, in this case, you have two curves y 1 and y 2 and L assigns a number L y 1 and L y 2 to each of these curves joining these two points A and B and uh, these are L y 1 and y 2 are from the class of admissible functions. They are uh, such that y, uh, y 1 prime and y 2 prime are piecewise continuous, so that the integral uh, the defining their lengths is well defined. So, then next we consider the general form of integral i, which may appear in our analysis and the other higher order, of, I mean other integrals, which will involve higher order derivatives will also appear in our analysis. For example, this i uh, here is a, an integral defined over the interval x 1 to x 2 of a certain given function f, which has continuity property of uh, that it f is continuous of its arguments and uh, this y and y prime, y is continuous whereas y prime is uh, piecewise continuous. So, then this uh, integral will be well defined in the sense of Riemann. And here uh, the boundaries, these points A and B are fixed here. So, each of uh, the admissible function uh, belonging to the admissible class must satisfy these boundary conditions that they are passing through these two points. And so, the each of the admissible function should actually be in this class such a way that uh, these boundary conditions are satisfied. Then we are uh, supposed to find a y which will actually optimize the value of this integral whether it will minimize or maximize, we will be actually saying that i gets optimized by the function y. And then other kinds of uh, integrals, more general forms like where you have several dependent variables y 1, y 2, y n uh, appearing uh, like this, the integral over x 1 to x 2 f of x x is the independent variable, whereas y 1, y 2 are dependent variables and their derivatives y 1 prime, y 2 prime and y n prime are appearing. So, here you would have these additional conditions like these are to be satisfied, so that each of these y i's are passing through the points a and b like you have y 1 at x 1 is y 1 0, y 2 at x 2, y 2 0. Similarly, this also be satisfied and y n 1 and y n 2 uh, at the point x 1 and x 2. So, these are the conditions to be satisfied by each of these y i's. And then we are supposed to find uh, the interval y 1, y 2, y n such that this integral is optimized. Then there are other integrals in the form where although the dependent variable is only 1 here, but then there are higher order derivatives appearing. So, uh, integral of x 1 to x 2 f of x y y prime y double prime and so on up to y nth derivative and y is from c n x or piecewise you can say that the highest order derivative can also be allowed to have uh, discontinuities of first kind on, on uh, certain finitely many points inside the interval x 1 to x 2. And then these are the conditions on uh, y up to n minus 1 derivatives and 
So, at each point x 1 to x uh, n and x 2, these are the conditions to be satisfied by y, y prime and y up to y n minus 1. Then a more general problem would be where you have more independent variables appearing like x 1, x 2 and then z is a function of x 1, x 2 surface uh, such that here uh, this is the derivatives with respect to x 1 and x 2 are piecewise continuous. Then you can consider this in, uh, integral of this f which is a function a continuous function of all of these arguments. Then the integral is again defined in the sense of Riemann here over the domain d which is a, an open connected subset of r 2 here. So, at each point x y there is a point uh, x y z x y on the surface and uh, this integral i is a function of z. For when we change this z, the surface z, the value of i changes and so we are asked to find a surface such that z such that this i is optimized. Such problems appear uh, in the uh, in connection with certain partial differential equations and those partial differential equations can be uh, posed as uh, optimization problems uh, as problems of uh, calculus of variations equivalently like this. That is what we will see subsequently in our discussion. Then certain preliminaries were discussed in the last lecture. We had certain function f uh, from x 1 to x 2 and it is called uh, continuous if the left and right limits exist and various examples were discussed in connection to that. And then piecewise continuous functions where continued discontinuities of first kind are allowed and only at finitely many points inside the interval bounded interval x 1 to x 2. Then piecewise differentiable functions where function is continuous and this f prime can have the discontinuities of first kind. Here f prime is assumed not to change sign uh, at in infinitely many uh, points inside the interval x 1, x 2 so as to avoid uh, the case where uh, the derivative f prime uh, left derivative and right derivatives are equal, but they are not equal to the value of the derivative at that point. Such situations will be avoided if we assume that f prime does not change sign uh, at infinitely many points uh, inside the interval. Then we consider partial uh, and total differentiation of a function of several variables where in the first case when uh, function u is a uh, function of n variables x 1, x 2, x n. So, it is a function from R n to R such that the first order partial derivatives exist with respect to its variables and then x i s are in turn uh, functions of uh, several variables t 1, t 2, t m. Then the partial derivative del u over del t i can be defined like this and in particular if x i s are functions of only single variable then this partial derivative with respect to t reduces to the ordinary uh, derivative du by dt in the following manner. And then we consider uh, the Leibniz rule which uh, states uh, how one actually differentiates an integral uh, where the limits are variable limits and this integrand is function of um, uh, several variables. One like in this case uh, f is function of two variables x and t limits are functions of uh, t and the variable of integration is x. So, here uh, i is treated as a function of t and therefore, we can consider it is differentiation with respect to t provided f has certain differentiability properties with respect to t. So, this can be defined like this i prime t is f of the when this t will be replaced by actually it should have been x and x 2 t like that and uh, d x 2 over d t minus f of x 1 t d x 1 over d t and then x 1 to x 2 del f over del t x t d x. That is what we will have here. Okay. So, this is, uh, uh, so the first term is f of x 2 t 
comma t d x 2 over d t minus f of x 1 t comma t d x 1 over d t. So, these uh, differentiation of the limits is assumed here that uh, they are x 1 and x 2 are differentiable functions of function t and uh, the here inside this integral the third term x 1 to integral of x 1 to x 2 del f over del t of x t. Here the, it is assumed that this f is the partial derivative of uh, this f with respect to t exists and it is piecewise continuous function. So, that this integral is well defined. Now, this was the proof of that. Now, we start in this lecture on the remaining concepts which will be required subsequently in a, our analysis. Now, the next one is integration by parts. It is a very useful formula which gives us integral of one, uh, one thing where we have uh, two functions appearing in terms of integrals of uh, the same function in a different form. Like you have x 1 to x 2 f prime x g x d x this can be seen that this is equal to minus integral x 1 to x 2 f x g prime x d x plus f x to g x evaluated at the boundary points x 1 and x 2. Here this, so what it, it states that uh, here you have two functions f and g, where uh, f and g are assumed to be, so f and g are continuous and f prime and g prime or f, f and g are piecewise differentiable. on x 1 to x 2. So, then these integrals will be well defined. Here this can be seen by the result that when you differentiate f into g, this is equal to f prime g plus f g prime. So, integrating this on uh, the interval x 1 to x 2, is equal to x 1 to x 2 f prime x g x d x plus till x 1 to x 2 f x g prime x d x. Now, this is integration of uh, differentiation of this term. So, this will cancel and it will give you the values at the end points. So, this side will be f x g x evaluated at x 1 to x 2. So, that is equal to x 1 to x 2 f prime x g x d x plus x 1 to x 2 f x g prime x d x. So, you can see that on the left side of this star here we have x 1 to x 2 f prime x g x. So, this is equal to the values of f x g x at end points x 1 and at x 2. So, that means uh, this is actually f of x 2 g of x 2 minus f of x 1 g of x 1. That is what actually this side is equal to. So, the f x g x evaluated at x 1 uh, x 2 and then minus evaluated at x 1. So, this 
uh, any of these terms can be seen that the this term is uh, this side minus the other term which is appearing here the first term on the right hand side of star. So, this is established using this fundamental concept that f into g prime is actually f prime g plus f g prime and then integrate this identity over the interval x 1 to x 2. Next we have the Euler's theorem on homogeneous functions So, what it says that first the concept of homogeneous functions, a function f of several variables like you have x 1, x 2 and x n and then you have u 1, u 2 and u m. So, this f is a homogeneous function of uh, these variables u 1, u 2, u m if it satisfies is homogeneous in u 1, u 2, u m if f of x 1, x 2, x n, h of u 1, u 2, h of u 1, h of u 2, h of u 3 and so on h of u m is actually equal to h to the power n. This n is called the degree of homogeneity of the function f x 1, x 2, x n and u 1, u 2, u m. So, this function f is homogeneous in these variables u 1, u 2, u m. If we have uh, f of x 1, x 2, x n and h of u 1, comma h of u 2, comma h of u 3 and so on up to h of u m is actually equal to this h comes out with power n here. So, n is called the degree of homogeneity. of f with respect to u 1, u 2, u m. So, for such a function Euler's theorem states that it says that del f this summation u j del f over del u j, j going from 1 to m, this actually equal to n times f. This f is of course, evaluated at uh, x 1, x 2, x n and u 1, u 2, u n. So, this is what is the Euler theorem for homogeneous functions, which will be very useful in our discussion. Next concept is the concept of method of undetermined Lagrange's multiplier. Lagrange's method of undetermined multipliers. Here in this case, uh, we have this function f of several variables x 1, x 2 and x n here and we have certain conditions is a given function and 
we have conditions conditions g j of x 1, x 2, x n equal to 0, where j is from 1, 2 to m. So, there are uh, m conditions. So, this uh, point, these variables x 1, x 2, x n are uh, supposed to satisfy these m conditions. Then here this uh, then the necessary condition the necessary condition for f to have minimum or maximum at x 1, x 2, x n is that del x del over del x i of f plus summation j equal to 1 to m lambda j g j this is equal to 0 at x 1, x 2, x n. Here, these lambda 1 are, so the points, these lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda m are called Lagrange's multipliers. these are unknown uh, and they are to be uh, found in addition with the point uh, points of uh, minima or maxima. So, when we want to find the points of minima or maxima where of this function f here, uh, where there are these m conditions given, we, these are to be satisfied by the point those points where f attains minima or maxima. Then uh, the necessary condition is that we should have these i equal to 1, 2, 2 n. These n conditions are to be satisfied uh, at the point uh, x 1, x 2, x n, where this f attains minimum maximum. Here, the points x 1, x 2, x n are to be found uh, and also uh, these lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda m are to be found. Uh, in this process. The next concept is the line integral here uh, we have seen the integrals of this kind a to b f x d x. So, here the simple case where we have certain interval here x 1 or uh, 8, 8 b here on the x axis and this function f is given over this interval and we know in the sense of Riemann we can define this function a to b provided f is piecewise smooth function. So, the generalization of this that you have in three dimension let us say x y and z and here uh, instead of this interval a v here we have certain curve given here like this c and this is a point a this point b like uh, we move from a to b we move from this capital a to capital b here so this defines the direction of the movement uh, on the curve c so if we move from b to a then that is the negative minus of the movement of what we do uh, in the forward direction a to b. So, this clearly fixes the direction on the curve c here and there is a function f x y z defined from any point x y z here 
into this gives you a value in r. So, we are supposed to find here, uh, we are supposed to define uh, the notion of integral of this f over this curve c in certain sense here and we will have certain let us say over uh, the arc length. So, s denotes the arc length here and uh, uh, this is a distance from any fixed point uh, to a movable point here. So, let us say point a is fixed. So, the length s the arc length s is the length of this curve uh, along the uh, see here if p is here. Now, this s will denote the length of this arc up to a to p. Uh, so, as p moves along this, uh, the s increases here. So, that is the arc length uh, parameter or in general, we may take, uh, the, we may parameterize this curve like this. So, the curve c is parameterized as x t y as y of t and z as z of t, here t ranges between a to b, then here uh, this curve c is assumed to be piecewise smooth in the sense that uh, these x, y, z uh, are uh, piecewise continuously differentiable. Their derivatives see x, y, t are continuous and then their derivatives are piecewise, uh, uh, they are piecewise continuous functions. So, x prime t, y prime t, z prime t are defined at all points except at finitely many points where they have jump discontinuities. So, this curve is called the directed curve uh, provided we have this kind of parametric representation here. Then if you partition this curve like this that is uh, like you partition uh, the interval a equal to t 0 less than t 1, less than t 2 and like this and you have t n which is b such that. Uh, so, this is the partition p n and the length of or the magnitude of the partition is defined like that maximum of t j minus t j minus 1, where j is from 1 to n. Then we consider this kind of sum S n summation j equal to 1 to n f of here on the interval we have let us say j j belonging to t j minus 1 to t j. Then you define f at x at xi z, y at xi z, z at xi z into t j minus t j minus 1. Now, if this limit exists, if this, if this limit as p n tends to 0 as the size of this partition which is the maximum of the, the largest length uh, of the sum interval. So, if this tends to 0 and if this limit exists as this mod p n tends to 0, provided this limit exists we define that to be. So, the limit is defined as integral over c f of x, y, z d t. So, x, y, z are functions of t and so this is uh, defined in the sense of Riemann as in this case here. So, if this limit exists, then we say that this integral line integral exists. So, in particular if t equal to s, then if t equal to s the arc length then
then we have integral over c f x y z, then x y z will be functions of s and we will have d s and we can see that this actually equal to integral over this f x. So, if we change the variable here, we will have x t then and some other. So, x y z and d s can be seen d x by d t square plus d y by d t square plus d z by d t square d t. So, that is the from one variable to another the arc from arc length to any general variable we have uh, this relation here. So, the line integral here for any curve given curve piecewise smooth curve here uh, such that the function f is uh, having the property that it is piecewise continuous on this in the sense that on this interval the function this f of f x t y t z t this defined as g t. So, this will be a function of t only if this is uh, piecewise uh, continuous on the interval a b and if the curve is piecewise smooth we can see that uh, this integral is well defined in the sense of Riemann. So, here any general parameter t is there if parameter t is replaced by the arc length s we have this form of the integral. There are other uh, forms of line integral like f x y z d x over c or f x y z d y over c f x y z d z. So, these are actually particular cases of this because they this can be written like this f x y z d x can be written f x y z d x by d t d t. So, or in particular we can take uh, s here. So, if we treat uh, the parameter as the arc length, then we have everything as a function of uh, s. If we treat the if we take the general parametric representation where parameter is t, then we can have this. So, uh, these are nothing but they are particular cases here. So, this f is actually replaced by f x y t d x by d t here, which is of the form we have this kind of general form of uh, line integral. So, this these are all can be treated as particular case of double star given here. In general, we have this form of line integral, where we have f 1 x y z d x plus f 2 x y z d y plus f 3 x y z d z. So, this can also be because each one can be defined like this and so each of these integrals are nothing but the sum of their uh, respective uh, here f is replaced by those f i is here and so this general form can be treated in this same manner. This is actually the vector form of this is the following. Uh, you have f r uh, f r like this dot d r, where f f is the vector f is f 1 x y z i f 2 x y z j plus f 3 x y z k. i j k are the unit vectors along the coordinate axis this is x i j k so this f is in general this is a vector function of x y z given like this and 
r position vector r for any point p here this o p. So, this is x y z. So, r position vector r is given by which is nothing but directed vector like this o p x i plus y j plus z k. So, d r element will be d x i plus d y j plus d z k. Now, if x y z are parameterized by uh, parameter tree along, so that x the point x y z is lying on a curve, then uh, this r, r will be a function of t and so we can have d r over d t will be d x over d t i d y over d t. Uh, if p is on c that means p is x t y t z t this point or this is the another notation can be x t i plus y t j plus z t k. Then we can see that this d r by d t the tangent vector at the point p on the curve will be given by d x by d t i plus d y by d t j plus d z by d t k. And so, uh, this f r dot d r this integral over c will be nothing but f 1 d x plus f 2 d y sorry this little f f 2 d y plus f 3 d z. So, that is what is the line integral which we considered here. So, that it is actually the vector form of the line integral written in this manner which is same as our line integral the general form of the line integral. Now, here one particular case of this which we will be using the following that is two dimensional case where i is taken as half of integral over c. So, here this is a plane curve in x y. like this and then this area this uh, domain d is enclosed by this c this is the uh, curve c is taken in the positive direction is taken uh, counter clockwise and so when it is closed we write the circle here and half of this x dy minus y dx so this is a line integral which is of the form uh, this one where f 1 is. So, in this case what f 1 is minus y and f 2 is x and f 3 is 0 uh, y by 2 rather x by 2 and f 3 is 0. So, we can see that this i is a particular case of this here. Now, this actually gives uh, the area of the uh, domain d enclosed by this curve c, which can be seen using the Green's theorem. So, Green's theorem says that if you have any plane curve like this. and this is the region enclosed here. See here we will take a very special case where any vertical line uh, like this it cuts at most two points See, like here it cuts only at one point or here it cuts at one point and at other points this vertical line and similarly the horizontal line the lines parallel to axis cut the area d at most at two points or situation may be like this also the whole segment 
can also come like this vertical line here if you d, this d is there. So, and c is the curve and closing this d, this vertical line here should take then the whole segment as uh, common points with the, uh, the domain. Here, uh, so we can allow this also. So, in particular, first we will take this the simplest case where uh, we have this case that the vertical line takes only at most two points uh, com common with the domain D and D uh, closer. So, the D is domain. So, the uh, D closer is actually uh, D union the boundary of D. So, only two points here this and this will be having intersection with this vertical line with this D closure here. So, for such uh, simple areas we can uh, state the Green's theorem and then extend it to this and more general uh, areas like this. So, Green's theorem says that the integral over this C m d x plus n d y is actually equal to this double integral n x minus m n x minus m y d x d y. Here it is assumed that the partial derivatives of n and m are uh, continuous in this region. So, that uh, this integral will be well defined here and on the boundary m and n are continuous. So, on D the partial de derivatives exist and they are continuous in D and m and n are on the boundary uh, they are continuous. So, that this integral line integral is defined or you can allow them to have piecewise continuity also. So, that the integral has to be well defined. So, this is the what is the statement of Green's theorem under the uh, these uh, restrictions on n and m that m and n are uh, here inside d the partial derivative exists and they are continuous and on the boundary uh, that means on c m and n are piecewise continuous. So, that is what is required and under these conditions uh, we have integral line integral m d x plus n d y equal to double integral over this domain d. Uh, of n x minus m y d x d y. This can be seen easily like in this simple case first we prove it for this. So, let us say this is a here and this b here this is the x range like this maximum range here and this is a is minimum of this so x range. Then uh, we can define this let us say this curve as y 1 x from here to here going like this and y 2 x like this y 2 x. Then the integral this minus m y d x d y can be written as the iterated integral a to b and y 1 x to y 2 x of m x y m y y partial derivative of m and d x first d y and then d x. So, here uh, when you in, uh, this differentiation integration will cancel each other and will give the values at the end points. m m x y 1 x or y 2 x minus m x y 1 x d x. Now, here we can see that uh, minus sign is there and along uh, this m is integrated uh, along this uh, curve y 2. Uh, it is integrated so, and because of this minus sign uh, we will have uh, this direction gets reversed and similarly in the second term here along this y 1 uh, we will have 
So, this minus minus will make it plus and so therefore, this will be the direction taken from A to B. So, this is, is actually nothing but the integral of this m x y d x, because in the first term we have minus here. So, we direction gets reversed. So, it go, goes from B to A. So, this is actually equal to from B to A, if you adjust this minus sign. So, it is like this B to A m d x or m x y 2 x d x and then plus a to b m x y 1 x d x. And so, the first term is going from b to a for the upper one and so, it gives you this part minus of y 2 and so, overall this is the direction we have taken. So, this is the integral uh, line integral m x y d x on the closed curve C. Similarly, for this n x we can do uh, the calculation here, which will give us similarly integral this double integral n x d x d y over d will give you n d y. Now, this we did for the very simple uh, case of this region uh, d. Now, if we have this kind of situation, we will see that here x is not changing. So, d x will be 0. So, it does not contribute anything to this and therefore, there will not be any contribution uh, on this curve here. So, one can extend this case to this more general situation and supposing you have uh, this kind of uh, region here d, then what we will do? We will partition this into this kind of region here and do integration over each part. So, d is partitioned as d 1, d 2, d 3 and d 4 like this. So, here each one we will do integration and these artificial boundaries introduced inside where uh, the integration over them will cancel. Like when we move like this on this d 1, then on d 2 we move uh, this way and we will go in the negative direction of this and so the integration over this will cancel. Similarly, uh, we go like this here and when we integrate in this region, then we go in the negative direction of this and therefore, uh, the integration over these interior uh, curves will get cancelled. So, here Green's theorem can be extended for more general situation like this. So, using this, we go back to the point here, we want to see that this integral i is actually giving you the area d x d y over the region d enclosed by this curve c here. So, that is what we can take the Green's theorem here and so, uh, looking at this i uh, due to the lack of time, uh, we are not able to complete this uh, concept here, which will be done in the next lecture. Thank you very much for viewing uh, this lecture.